start the Zoom session. So I will, um, yeah. So let's do that. I can get in as a normal user. I cannot get in as a super user to install Zoom. Perfect. Excellent. All right. So. Let me then open this. That worked. Okay, so then we do laptop. Ooh. As the sound of the screen. All right. Okay, so yeah, they reorganize the things a little bit so then once you request access yeah Dafina has requested then you will see the the wiki page so everyone else who is um who has a laptop and you can open it then you can open it you don't have to open it because i will show it on the on the monitor um so we will not use um we will not use blackboard we will use um we will use this uh, gitlab uh, we have a little bit of an issue with GitLab because they haven't updated our license yet. So uh, we're waiting for it. So certain things cannot be done, like sub apparently pushing to repositories is not temporarily possible, uh, but that should be resolved. But that's just like um, a minor, minor thing. So course materials will be uh, done through um, GitLab. So if you don't have an account or if you don't have an access, then uh, let let me know um once you get access then you can put uh you can edit the wiki pages and you can put issues into the issue tracker i will organize the issue tracker in similar fashion to the other courses so we'll have announcements and we will have kind of course related things um this is a specialization course so we will be trying to work towards your master projects so i have provided some um let me make it bigger uh i have provided some topics uh but those topics are just a kind of guideline uh because we will agree on what topics we will cover based on the discussion with you and all what you will be doing for your master projects so last year for example uh, uh, apart from those topics we had a topic on decentralized and distributed databases because that was useful for one of the students. Uh, we had a topic about um, data science and machine learning because that was useful for many students. Uh, so we had additional topics that we covered in the course, depending what you're planning to do for your master projects. Those topics are kind of just like, as I, I said, guideline. Uh, and we will cover some of those topics in the course, regardless of your master projects. But some of the topics that we cover in the course are sort of specifically for your, for your master projects. Um, we have classes scheduled twice a week, although this Thursday, for some reason, we are not scheduled. Uh, so sometimes Steinrunner organizes the, the schedule based on some 
parameters that I don't understand. So sometimes there is no lecture and sometimes there is a lecture. Uh, we will be running the sessions on Mondays and Thursdays uh, for the first half of the semester. Uh, and then the second half of the semester will be more free. So we will not have regular lectures. You, we will use that time for you to give, um, to give a lecture on your topic. Uh, and we will try to have more time for you to finish your projects. So as with the other courses this semester, most, most coursework is sort of in the first half. And then the second half is mostly individual work because you're really preparing to do your master projects. So you will be doing, you will have less classes basically. You will have more time to do the projects. So we will have the same setup here. Um, the course is similar, similarly organized as um, the previous course, uh, the introduction one that you can do a report which is mostly based on literature review or your study uh, or you can do some development um, and then write a technical report about the developments that you've done uh, so the specialization courses as we were discussing in the in the um, introductionary session uh, for you to build some functionality or to build your knowledge and to elevate risks about your master project. So you may have an idea about the master project and then you are not sure if something will work or you're not sure how long something takes, then you can use this semester and those projects here to develop some libraries or to develop some uh, tools that you will use for that data collection for your master projects, right? So you don't, obviously you're not doing your master project now, but you're building kind of expertise and you're building some tools and you're building some understanding or literature review that will be used for your master project. I often ask, can I reuse what I do in advanced project, uh, pro advanced project work or in project planning or in specialization courses in my master thesis? And the answer is you can reuse it, but you cannot be double graded for the same work, right? So when you're writing your thesis and when you're doing your, your master project, you have to say that this part was partially developed in, uh, you know, as a literature review in another course. And as you do those disclaimers, then it's okay. But the reviewer who is reading the thesis, if they get this kind of a fuller picture of those various building blocks that have been contributing to the master thesis, they will kind of grade you favorably, right? So you basically cannot um, not say that you've done something somewhere else, but usually, for example, in the, uh, project planning, you have to plan your project and you have to provide a bit of a literature review about your master project. And that literature review you usually reuse in your master project because like it's the review for your master project, right? So you cannot do the same work twice independently. But what you do is you take your literature review that you've done this semester and next semester you kind of revise it. You say, okay, I do check for the newest papers. I will check if I haven't missed anything. I will kind of update it. And then you, you use it and then you say, you know, this literature review or this chapter was partially a fulfillment of this course, but then I've updated it and, and so on, right? So it's the same with specialization. So if you develop some software or if you develop a library, of course you can describe it in your master thesis. You just say that library was partially or fully developed in the other course and then I've used it for my master project. So the more you can put it together, the more kind of building blocks you can put to your, towards your master project, the better actually, because it's kind of um, more comprehensive. It provides the reviewers a, a bit of uh, a more meat of what you've done, right? And realistically, if you're given a semester uh, to do your master project, that's, that's not enough to do a master project. Um, half of that semester you will be writing thesis. You will be actually producing this, you know, 100, 150 pages document. Uh, and you want to do it well, you want to have nice figures, you want to do it like, you know, professionally, and it will be time consuming. So, you know, a lot of time will be spent actually writing the thesis. Um, a lot of time will be spent collecting data and running experiments and making stats and so on. So, you know, if, if you want to actually do the work and do everything else in one semester, that's usually not enough. You, you do need extra time. You can outsource into the specialization courses or the advanced project work, uh, the better. 
Um, students also have some problems um, uh, distinguishing what should go into those three courses, right? So we, we have um, three courses. So we have uh, project plan. That is usually just the plan. Um, and then in the plan, you say, I'm going to do this, 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 this. So you use future tense, you will say will, and so on. And then you will kind of reuse it because it will have a methodology section and so on, what you're planning to do. You will sort of reuse it in your master thesis, but you have to change will to a past tense that you've done it, right? So I use this methodology and I've done those experiments and blah, 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 right? So there is a plan and then there is, so th this will be reused, of course. And then you will have usually a literature review uh, related to, um, to your master project. But like you're doing it kind of now and you're not sure exactly what your master project will be next semester, right? You're still kind of fine tuning exactly what is your research objective and what you will do, right? You pretend that you know it by this plan and by this literature review, but it can be slightly different, right? Uh, usually students learn this semester some details or some things that are actually the, the main core of what they will do for the master project, which means this will be kind of adjusted a little bit, right? So, but again, you will reuse the, the, the literature review. Then there is the advanced uh, project work. Um, and here you basically doing a project, a small project where you have to do lit review, set up a hypothesis, run experiments, uh, write it up into the report and evaluate your work. So you have to do all steps that you will need to do for your master thesis, but for a very small, tiny project, right? So here you're going through all the steps uh, to learn what all the steps that you need to have in your bigger master project, but for a very small, tiny hypothesis or small, tiny problem, right? So you pick something relatively small uh, that you can do all those four or five stages in a single course. Uh, so what should you be here? It, it is basically a project, but it is, not, it is not your master project. It's something much, much smaller than your master project. So what should you pick here? Um, usually you pick here a project that is uh, aligned with your master project, but not exactly the main objective of your master work, but something related to it. Uh, so something, as I said, it, it has to be small. Um, it has to be kind of really small and it has to be relatively easy for you to investigate in a couple of weeks such that you can spend time evaluating it, writing the report and doing all the stages, right? Because the focus here is not just on the project. The focus is on all the steps and to have the report done at the end. So the, the research questions and things that you're doing have to be small. Um, Students are recommended to use something that they don't know about the master project. So like if you're doing a master project, let's say related to, uh, I don't know, um, identity wallets, for example, right? And you want to know what is currently the, uh, the best algorithm for doing kind of a key management or what is the, the uh, typical, uh, structure of doing kind of a key management. Then you can set this project to be kind of specifically about key, man key management and electronic wallets and kind of investigate that. Uh, and then you will have this done and then that gives you answers to a bigger project that relates to identity wallets in general, right? So you can kind of uh, narrow down to a specific issue or specific aspect, research it in, under this course and then expand uh, into your master project and use this as a sort of a site, like small sub question, right? Uh, so then can you reuse it in your master thesis? Of course you can reuse it, especially if you, uh, for example, develop some, some tooling or some library. So I had, um, I had a student last year and he was doing, he wanted to do an analysis of, uh, um, he was doing a machine learning project and he wanted to analyze uh, manga videos, uh, which were in Japanese, and try to do that translation into English based on the 
training um, because he had the manga in the um, in, in Japanese audio and then with the uh, some of them had the English transcription as a, as a text right so you have a video and you have the transcription file which is attached to the video and he basically did the advanced project work on building tools which allowed him to partition the video into the voice segments and to extract the timing of, of the transcriptions in such a way that you, he could correlate both. So then he could use it for his machine learning, right? So it was building all the necessary machinery later on for his master project to do this training, right? Uh, so he used this project to build those, those tools and those libraries in Python and he tested it, he evaluated it, he fine-tuned the performance, he wrote the report, and that was his advanced product work. And then he took all those results, all this machinery, to actually do the training on his data set, right? So you can try to, um, to think what could be done here such that you can reuse it. Uh, he didn't really reuse the text from the report, right? Um, uh, it may be a little bit like some description of the library and, and things like that, but the, what he reused was the results, right? So the results are the things that you really want to reuse in your master thesis. So those are the two, uh, the two main courses. Uh, and then you have the specialization. Um, so then the specialization is yet another course that is sort of similar. Uh, but it uh, gives you a little bit more flexibility. These two courses are kind of well set. Uh, the specialization is a little bit more flexible, a little bit more elastic, or, or what is inside, right? It's a little bit up to you. Uh, and also those two courses, there are no really lectures. You're doing all your work yourself. Uh, with this course, we will have some lectures and we will kind of learn some extra things, which may hopefully be uh, good for your, for your uh, master project. Does it make sense? Okay, so um, do you have any questions about this? You don't have to have um, a commitment to the master thesis today or in the next semester. You will have to have it like towards the end of November, I think, uh, December. Then you have to commit to a particular supervisor and particular project. So you don't need to stress out that oh yeah, I, I still don't quite know what I want to do about my master project. Well, what you should know is though, you should know roughly what you want to do, right? If this guy was like thinking about this machine learning, he cannot change to something to do with GIS or with something completely different, right? You sort of have a particular area, you have particular focus, and then you will kind of explore what is exactly what you want to do this semester, and then you commit to it. Uh, if you already know, that's great because that kind of guides you all through all those other courses. Uh, but if you don't know, then then don't stress. Um, what else do you do? We need to know. Well, so for this course, we I need to know what you're thinking of. Like, what are the areas for your um, for your master work? So if you already have like an idea, if you already have a topic or if you already have an area that you want to do, then, um, then let me know, right? Uh, the, the mechanism for this will be, I, I have, um, though, um, so, so we did it last year as well. Um, you basically put here kind of topics or ideas that you think should be included in this course. Uh, that would be useful for your master project. And then we will kind of negotiate what is common to other people because you might be researching something unique that nobody else is interested in, in which case that may not be a good example for a lecture. Uh, but if there are more people kind of interested in a particular topic, we will do a bit of voting, then we will include that as a, as a topic, right? Uh, those unique topics that are only specific to you, they are okay as well because then you can um, be given some papers or you can be doing some, uh, a little bit of work and then you use it as a topic for discussing in the class. Yeah? Uh, can I have some special topics that I'm looking for that might relate to the, uh, this course specifically, but uh, should I just put the random topics into this and yeah. you will kind of give your opinion about what might fit 
Yeah, you 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 can. Yes. Sure. Just just put everything that you think you might need, and then we kind of discuss it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that's true. Yeah. So this um, the, so th this course has like like two aspects. One is that it's still a course. You still need to learn some new things, right? And they may or may not be useful for your master project. If they are not entirely useful for your master project, that's fine, right? So the next week we're gonna discuss liquid democracy. I don't think you will be, all of you will be working with some governance or liquid democracy systems, but you will kind of learn some new concepts. You will learn a little bit extra stuff that, you know, might be useful later in your life, right? Uh, so not all the topics which we cover here as a teaching is necessarily aligned with your master project. The work that you will do should be aligned with your master project because that is kind of beneficial for you, right? Um, so your topics, uh, and your projects should be kind of more going towards the direction of your work, right? So in, ben, in your case, it might be more towards VR or, so, you know, more towards data collection of some sort. You don't know yet, right? And that's okay. I mean, we don't have to cover this as a teaching topic, but you can cover it as your research topic, right? Uh, but you also kind of allow, allow some sort of exploration phase, I guess. In yeah so we we because we have to kind of um do the plan and we have to kind of commit to certain yeah. things so there will be an exploration phase of about two to three weeks mm -hmm. and then we will kind of commit right because right. you will have to do the work right uh so you can explore uh, what do you want to do for this course in the next let's say two weeks and then you will say oh marius i would like to do this you know, I don't know, VR technology related topic. And then that's your topic, right? Um, what, what we will do is you, as I said, you can do it a little bit more theory based or you can do it a little bit more uh, development based. Um, all the projects are individual uh, because you're kind of working on the project alone, but the project has two parts. One part is you actually, preparing something, you're preparing like a short lecture, like 20, 20 minutes to half an hour lecture to, to the rest of the class. Uh, and that's mostly kind of a teaching obligation, right? So you don't have to present your results of your project. You don't have to present what you've done. You can present the material which relates to that topic, right? Of course, if you later in the semester and you've already done things, then you can present what you've done. But it doesn't need to be like this. It can be just the overview of the topic, right? So in the past, what, what we did, we agreed on like two, three key papers. Uh, each student had those two, three papers attached to the, to the topic. Other students were seeing that they could read the papers before the lecture. And then the student was kind of a giving a presentation about the topic, right? So then it was sort of like, learning like you were teaching the rest of the class about a particular topic uh but they could have read those papers before as well right and everybody kind of had this uh overview uh it doesn't have to do anything to do with your own project right so each of the each of the projects are sort of independent of each other but this presentation to the class again is in this sort of a teaching uh domain right as i said so part of the course is to teach you new things and parts of the course is for you to do something towards your master. Uh, so, so basically like a serious games course. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly like the uh, serious games course, yes. Um, yeah, so put, so here what we want is we want the topics that you consider being part of the, of the teaching, of the, of the lecture side of things, right? Um, and for the, topics of your projects, what we do is you actually create a page, sub page of the wiki, and then you say Ben's project, and then you say what your project is, right? And then I will individually with you discuss 
uh, is it like too big? Is it too small? Is it like what uh, we will I will help you to scope it. And then I will provide you extra suggestions about the papers or something that relates to the project, right? So here, what I would like you to do is to see, to see some lecture topics that you think are useful to have in this course uh, outside of the lecture topics that are sort of highlighted. And then we will prepare the schedule. We will prepare like what lectures we will have. Um, and for your projects, for this course, create a page. Uh, call it yeah, Ben's project. Or if, if you have a name, you can name it. It uh, doesn't have to have a name. No, a bit more concrete. Yeah, at least. No, no, no. Yeah, so, so for next Monday, we already have a plan. We're going to cover like a liquid democracy. Uh, I would like to have the. Yeah, that's right. So I would like to have uh, some ideas about the about this, about the, the lectures, lecture contents. Uh, for your so this is for topics for the lectures, not for the projects. Yeah. So for the projects, we need a little bit more time, right? So I think we, uh, yeah, the the sooner you start, the better. But you, it should be probably like a short paragraph, what you want to do, and um, some bullet points with some main, I don't know main objectives of what what that will be like is it will be like a development project or it will be more of a research project or um it's a, it's a bit tricky with the privacy thing because i could show you last year students uh <laughs> proposals but then i probably need to ask them if they are okay with uh with that uh i could anonymize it so i could show you some without attaching names i guess um you have a class win when okay okay I see, I see. Um, I see. So let me know. So if, if there is con if there is still conflict, uh, <laughs> You know, by the end of this week, just let me know, and then we will organize. We will somehow uh, reschedule. It's just that one week. I see. Um, okay. So. Yeah, so what, what we can do is let's do this. I will shift the the order around. So we will do the liquid democracy lecture on Monday uh, because then everybody can be in. If we cannot discuss the topics on Thursday because of the conflict, we will cancel the Thursday class for this class and we'll discuss it on Monday. And then you just spend more time like pr planning the, the topics and your projects. Okay. And then we just discuss it on Monday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I will turn this around and then uh, provisionally I will not have a meeting with you guys on, th on Thursday. But if there is no conflict, if the course is kind of shifted in such a way that there is no conflict, then we will meet. Okay. If we don't meet, then you spend time at home just planning a little bit more about your, your projects. And then we discuss it uh, on Monday instead. Okay. Um, right. So. Uh, Again, two, two things. So topics for lectures come here. 
uh, it can be anything. Topics for projects, you make a page and then you write down what you're thinking of doing. Uh, if you have more than one idea, put both ideas, right? And then what I will do is I will kind of have a session with you and I will chat a little bit with you to see like how to scope it. Yeah, project ideas, the main, main objectives of the project. If you already have some literature for that topic, put the papers there. Uh, it will be kind of your page for uh, maintaining the, the project progress. Yeah, if you have a repo if, or, you know, uh, overleaf link, you put it there as well. Um, so then I have kind of one shop, one stop shop for that project with, with you. And then I sort of know what's going on, right? Um, we did it last, did, we did it like this the last three years um, and that was fine. Um, my, I think it will work, yeah. Right, so what else do we need to discuss? Yeah, so the assessment of the course is um, you will give one lecture, as I said, 20 minutes to half an hour plus some discussion, right? So you can have a 20, 25 minutes presentation, you discuss the, the whole thing and then we have a discussion in the class. So you can actually prepare like a task or you can have like a question that you want the class to work on uh, and then we spend the rest of the hour uh, just doing that, right? So you will be kind of uh, a lecturer for uh, uh, one small topic uh, that, that you will cover. So that will be the, the presentation. But as I said, it doesn't have to be the results of your work. It can be just the topic. Um, then the second aspect is you will do the report. So you will do the project and you will write the individual report. Uh, of course, the report is um, kind of the the evaluation of the project that you've done, right? It can be a technical report, more describing what you've done, like if you're developing some software, or it can be sort of more of a re research uh, project uh, report. And then there is an oral exam, but the oral exam is kind of on your, on your topic. So it, you will not be asked a lot about the, all the other topics, it's mostly about you, and it's mostly just to evaluate that you've done the work uh, we always have an oral exam as a form of a uh, sanity check that, you know, so it, it will be more or less just formality, right? Like uh, as we usually have it. Um, yes, so then uh, I spent already talking about this alignment. That is hard. Like I, I know it, it's hard to come with those, like what to do where and what to do for advanced project work and what to do for specialization. That's kind of not easy, non-trivial thing because you still don't know exactly what you're doing for your masters, right? Unless you know, right? Uh, if you know, then that it, it's easier. But if you don't know, then it's still a little bit kind of exploration. You're kind of searching exactly what to do. And you can use this course to kind of explore one area that you're thinking of and to decide, okay, should I go there or not, right? Uh, so you can, pick a topic that you're not quite sure about uh, and then dive into it. Um, because of the nature of the course, it cannot be really big topic. You, you kind of need to relatively narrow it down, right? Um, that's another uh, suggestion for master topics. Um, usually the, um, yeah, so, so from personal experience, when I was doing my master project, I thought, the, the kind of the bigger the project, the better it, it feels. Because first of all, there is a lot to write about. And second of all, it kind of feels that you're sort of doing something uh, substantial, right? Um, that over the, you know, the 20 years of, of, of doing this work, I learned that that's wrong. <laughs> but it's like not obvious why it's wrong, right? Like my, my uh, it wasn't uh, one of my teachers, he was not my supervisor, but the, one of the teachers for, um, for my master program, he was sort of uh, saying that you have to focus on like very small, tiny kind of problem, right? And kind of do it. And that's the good, good project. 
And I was like, come on, it's like solving this one small problem. Like, what's the point? I'm going to spend my whole year on this one small problem. It's like, you know, what's the point? Like, he must be some, you know, weak researcher or something that, that he's suggesting that, right? And I'm going to do this big thing, right? I'm going to solve, you know, the cancer problem. Um, and it's actually, you know, it, it's true that you cannot do a big problem because you just don't have time. Solving kind of a very wide and big problem takes years. Even if you're doing PhD, which takes, you know, three to four years. Uh, the, even PhD is not enough time to do big, wide problems. Even for PhD, you have to narrow it down, right? Uh, and for masters specifically, right? So if you're thinking uh, topics that are sort of general, kind of formulated in a kind of very generic way, um, that's good as a background and that's good as a context, but not good as a topic of the research project. As a topic of a research project, you have to kind of go really down and narrow it down to like a very specific problem. Like, for example, how can you um, make the most efficient particular machine learning algorithm on a very specific architecture with a specific CPU on a, like a GPU, right? Um, uh, layout, right? So that, that makes it like, yeah, but that's like so, so concrete, right? But that kind of makes, um, first of all, it demonstrates that you identified kind of a problem that nobody solved yet, right? Uh, there is a lot of very generic problems that are not solved because they are generic. Uh, but the generic problems are solved by formulating very specific kind of research questions. And your ability to formulate this kind of a very specific why or how um, kind of already demonstrates that you've done your kind of legwork and you kind of reach this sort of boundary of what is known, right? And then ability to just replicate what is already great. And then ability to contribute, that's, that's fantastic, right? So what you should think in a kind of like, you always start with like a generic question, like how fast particular machine learning algorithm works, okay? Uh, is a uh, support vector machine faster than uh, this, I don't know, random forest or whatever, right? Uh, but you cannot do it in general. You have to say for a specific problem. So for what specific problem? Okay, so you, you have a specific problem and then you compare it to algorithms and then what are the additional variables? Like maybe this algorithm performs better on GPU because it's like, uh, you know, CPU based. Uh, and this algorithm is like uh, IO based and it performs better like on CPU with uh, fast access to RAM. I don't know, like you, you have to kind of narrow down what exactly is the problem, right? What is the specific question? And then you kind of digging into it and then you're checking what other, pe other people checked. And then you kind of going to a place where you're actually finding something like nobody asked that question yet. Nobody sort of know that. And that's kind of the, that's where you want to go. Uh, but that's hard, as I'm saying, like, uh, first of all, it feels a little bit weird. And second of all, it's hard to do all, the, all of this. Um, so what I recommend is you, you spend some time exploring. And for this course, you can pick something that is scoped a bit too big uh, as, as a kind of a, you know, learning um, as an exploration. But for your master project, you kind of need to have an idea of the domain and then uh, of a specific problem that you want to tackle. Um, that, does it make sense? It's kind of hard to explain this. Like I, it took me ages. I'm a bit of a slow learner, right? So it, it took me ages to un understand what this other lecturer was telling me like, you know, 20 years ago. Like I didn't understand it for years. Like I thought he was just wrong. Um, but uh, like now I, I think, yes, he, he, well, he knew what he was saying. Like he was right. Uh, I, I just didn't understood it, right? Um, and it is kind of interesting to, um, to do a master, master's project because you will kind of go beyond your own limitations. You will sort of learn um, how to deal with something that is sort of bigger that you normally tackle. Uh, with your normal projects. It's, it will be like one of the biggest projects you've tackled so far. Um, so, all right, so um, 
yeah, so presentation to the class, the report, and then the oral exam. Um, the alignment, yes, uh, we're not gonna do it in a single lecture. So we have to start, and then we have to start discussing, and then we have to start scoping, and then we have to start like searching what is, what is the problem, what might be the problem, and how this kind of problem relates to something else such that you pick something for this course, right? Uh, I cannot do it for you. Um, we, in Max, we, we do have some predefined master projects which are kind of advertised for, uh, for students, uh, but the tradition is that almost all students come up with their own sort of uh, objectives or their own projects. Um, and it is like we believe, like Rune and Christopher and, and others, we, we kind of believe that it's part of you becoming kind of an independent researcher, being able to identify something that you want to research. Uh, if somebody else from externally gives you a project and you're kind of researching it, you're missing out on this, on this step of this identifying what needs to be researched. So that's one aspect. And the second one, if you do it, you kind of have the agency and also the, the kind of the blame for choosing it, right? Uh, if, you cho if you're given a project, you may have this sort of uh, narrative saying I, the project was kind of uh, forced on me in a sense, not, 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 not necessarily forced, but it was not like my project, it was somebody else's project, such that my agency about the project is not like 100%. But if you choose your own project, then it's like, okay, it's like, it is 100%, right? <laughs> so, but, but you should not worry neither right you will have your supervisor and you will have kind of a support people and you can even if you have a different supervisor you can go and ask some expertise to another lecturers right we we have quite a spectrum of skills in the department and you're free to chat with anybody about your project even if they are not your supervisor right so don't limit yourself um just seek the expertise that you need yeah so um what I would like you to think of is the topics for the, for the lectures that we will cover. Um, as I said, we had lectures similar to the lectures which we had in the introductory course related to decentralized technologies, going a little bit more in depth into some of the topics. Uh, we had a machine learning lecture last year. We had a lecture to uh, Jupyter Notebooks, like in, in Python, how to do some simple machine learning and some analysis, some data pre-processing. We had lecture like that. Um, I had a lecture on uh, computer architectures, like what's the difference between RISC and uh, CISC CPUs, for example. You know, none of you might be dealing with hardware. None of you might be doing projects related to that, but you're becoming sort of a masters of computer science and you do need to understand some, some top right? Uh, so what's, you know, why uh, Apple changed to ARM? CPU, what are the reasons? Do you know? <laughs> okay, after the lecture, you will know more. You will uh, kind of appreciate a little bit more of how the risk architecture actually performs and why Apple made that decision to, to change. Will other computer manufacturers follow that? Will kind of ARM take over the world? Will Intel die? Okay, you know, you should have an opinion, right? Um, so we had lecture, lecture like this. We, we will have lecture like this this year as well. Uh, we had, um, what are the topics we had last year which were not the typical ones? We did have some topics related to quantified self, to tracking, uh, especially in the relation to COVID tracing, um, because that was kind of a hot topic, um, because governments were deciding how to do the tracking of individuals. And uh, as a technologist, you kind of need to know what is possible on the technology level and what's not, and how COVID tracing can be done without violating kind of individual privacy, for example. Uh, so we were discussing, yeah, the more centralized and decentralized models. Um, we always kind of talk a little bit about uh, communication, like uh, centralized and decentralized uh, communication mechanisms. Um, yeah, but yeah, if you if you have some yeah, suggestions, then put them in. So we will we will work it out. 
Um, what else do we need to cover? Any questions? Yeah, so I will try to hug my laptop and to have Zoom working on, on the laptop instead of uh, phone for the next session. Uh, thanks for uh, recording the, the session. Uh, if you can um, yeah, maybe send me the, the file or somehow um, you, yeah, you, yeah, the best is probably just if you share the file with me. Uh, so then I will put it online. I will try to stream and record the lectures, but the recommendation is that we should have the, the classes physically if you're not feeling any symptoms. And that's better uh, because that allows us to have a bit more discussion. Um, so what I suggest is that you will stop the recording. Uh, we will have 